What's up guys? Today we're gonna try out something a um, little bit weird or interesting, depending on your perspective. I happened to pull Unkensa on the weekend. She's kind of new champion and isn't exactly considered like a top PvP champion. I have never seen anybody use her yet. But she does have uh, some interesting stuff on her kit. And we definitely should try what we could do with her. I'm not even sure exactly how I want to build her yet. Like, do I want to go super fast or stay at medium speed and higher accuracy? We'll see about that. But basically, she has a passive that uh, gives her accuracy and reduces enemy turn meter whenever they receive a boss. So it's kind of like Valkyrie passive. You could use that to... Uh, cut into the enemy when CV does their turn meter boost and stuff like that. I'm not exactly known for my speed and I don't usually do speed teams or try to uh, even cut in, but at one point Valkyrie used to be super meta so it kind of seems like maybe there's something that you could do with this. Then on the A3 it's also kind of interesting that um, it places de decrease defense and weaken, but this skill ignores uh, immunity. So you could do it after the CF turn meter boost again, for instance. And maybe this would give me enough boost to get a kill with my Staltus, who isn't known for having the best damage. I actually, I did, uh, <laughs> I had a fight like that with her, and let's see if we can replicate it. Then on the A2, it puts Poison Cloud, Increase Speed and 15% uh, Continuous Heal or two of them on one target for two turns. Obviously you can extend that with Masteries as well. And it gives you turn meter boost. The, um, none of the other stuff is super interesting here, except the Poison Cloud. So I would say that it's basically kind of, you know, one turn Poison Cloud. They, they get instantly a turn meter boost and they're probably gonna take a turn and then it's gonna be one turn poison cloud but you could extend it with mastery so it's kind of interesting well what i was thinking is that there's kind of two ways that you could do do this skill either you have it um go just before your stone skin nuker and she's also in stone skin and you would basically extend the stone skin to two turns it basically does the same thing as stone skin, you know, you can't get debuffs and you can only take weak hits so you basically can't die. Or, or on the other hand, you could just have, um, try to have her like one speed slower than your nuker and usually go instantly after him. I don't think it will go perfectly in practice, but then you could try to get the, the stone skin duration to be even longer. Now another interesting thing is that this skill is treated and cooldown. So if you can decrease that from like masteries or anything else, refresh uh, accessories or um, what's it called? Um, the item set for from Live Arena. I actually have her in two pieces of that. That will give you 12% speed and okay, let me double check. And 12% chance to. Um, Reduce the cooldown of abilities by one turn. Impulse set, yeah. Of course, I instantly remember when I can see the set, but I forgot <laughs> before lo looking at it. And A1 is also kind of tricky and interesting. That it does a AOE just nuke with decrease attack debuff on 70% chance. And then also highest crit damage ally does ally attack with that. She has very weird and interesting kit, though the, the base stats on her are kind of low. Like I was saying before, she she's super interesting. If she just had higher base stats and a revive on her kit, then I think she would be on the level that you would see her being used. But so far I have never seen anybody else use her and you know, I don't think it will turn around. But let's see if we can, you know, Catch some people off guard and do some trickery with her that uh, 
will get us some wins. Often I feel these days that on my last pick I don't really have any good options that would work against the enemy team because they have stuff like block, um, block buff, step buff and buff ship and they ignore shields and so on. Often my Necret and Helicat who used to be my crutches to keep my team alive they don't really do anything against many teams and maybe I could slot her in as the last pick. But yeah, I think I'm gonna have a bunch of new champions this week. You know, none of them is like CF or Maris level or Primal Champion. But um, I'm gonna get mod when they do the update so that you can exchange the old fragments from the last fusion for mod fragments. Um, it kind of depends on Iron Sheet. Might take me two weeks to get enough fragments. Because you have a limit of how many you can turn on one week, but I might get more next week. And this week I have Unkensa and also Sulfurion that I will try and gear. Sulfurion I didn't gear yet, I will do that during the CVC. <laughs> I didn't want to do both of them instantly, but I did want to try something, so let's start out with Unkensa because, like I said, I literally have never seen anybody use her. Okay, Mika Ke Wukong. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, let's go with Dutchess. You know, both of them are prone for polymorph blocking, and I don't have it on Angar, so let's go with this. I always say it, but I, if I did have the 6 star blessing on Ankara instead of Duchess, I I would pick Ankara a lot more and I would have picked her in this situation, but often I pick both of them or I might pick just Ankara against lockout teams. Yeah, like here he has the R base, so should we just go with Stalos and Unkensa? Then we could um, try her in the first battle instantly. And um, like, R base would destroy my Rotos with her stone skin and taunt and force affinity. But Stalos does have AoE nuke, so we can get through it. And maybe Unkensa can protect her. Now, who do I want to ban? Oh, is that the support Wukong? Actually, I have my Wukong build as a support today as well. Um, I think we might go for the Wukong ban. I missed Arima in almost every battle. And I just find very few chances to actually use my nuke Wukong since I don't have Arima myself, so I kind of thought about going for the support build again, which I used to run before, so we'll see also how that goes today. Ah, he brought the lockout from our base A1, that's kind of unfortunate. Who do I even want to protect here? Or I mean... I think we're actually gonna... Oh, okay, I was too slow. I was thinking about it too much. I was thinking, do I want to do the decreased defense or just protect Stalus? But um, that was the wrong person. And I guess the... Um, the why can't I recall his name? The passive of the champion from um, Live Arena. How, how, how can I not remember his name? Dude, I just woke up, I'm a bit groggy. But his passive does 10% damage per uh, 
buff on you. That's why he did surprisingly high damage on Duchess, even um, even through the poison cloud. He still has stone skin. Do I even want to use this skill? Maybe we'll just do A1 and get an ally attack. Yeah. The A1 is super good for A1, you know. Often it might even be worth using A1 over the other skills. I just wish she had revive. Then she could actually be very, very interesting. Okay, it doesn't... I don't think our first enemy was, you know, he's barely in the gold 4. I'm sure we have a kind of a gear gap, so his team looked a lot more scary than it was on practice. I, I think this could have been harder than it uh, was. Okay, Quintus, yeah, Quintus. Anyway, ig ignore that... Uh, <laughs> that... Uh, fail of my mind and let's see how it goes I didn't have the longest of sleep last night because <laughs> there, there there was a meeting um, at 1 a.m. on my time you know when you deal with Americans you can't um, you, you can't get anything at a reasonable time and every time I have a meeting with them or something like that, it's gonna be like a 1 a.m. or something stupid at my time, so... It, actually, in... Uh, the, the, this was not with, like, you know, Doc, but... In... Um, to be fair to Doc, like, when we did the video with... Uh, Drog Cruise and Anoop on Sunday. Drog was kind of accommodating. He, he he knew about it and we were able to come up with a time that wasn't super late. I think we did the video on um, 9 p.m. my time, which is still, you know, not early, but um, that's pretty much the earliest that I can get with American people. <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to just go with UDK already. Should I do it? Yeah, let's do this. I mean, he could technically be both Duchess and Ankara, but I don't know if that would even be good for his team. Then he wouldn't have lockouts or anything like that, so I don't think he would pick both of them. Okay, Rotos and Yumeko against Lockout, meaning that he's definitely... Actually, I don't know about that. I mean, I think he's gonna ban my UDK and not Armands. I mean, that's what I would think. Um, um, hmm. We're not gonna go with Yungens at this time. Maybe it was bad, because I don't know if I... Uh, since I don't have Wukong geared, I don't think Wukong would be super good here, but... I think we have to go with Staldus. Okay, this might not go as well as I was hoping. He picked my Rotos and, and it instantly puts me in trouble. But I don't know if he can get away with banning my Narthus because we have Armands. If we didn't get Armands in this battle, we would be totally screwed. 
if he got it, but since we did get it, yeah, he, he had to go for the ban, so we're okay. This team is fine, but you know, if he would have been able to ban Narthus, I wouldn't be able to kill this team with Staldos alone. Do I even want to revive it yet? I think, um, no. I think we're gonna save it for Narthus. Yeah, it's just, Rodos is just gonna kill it at least. Maybe I'll do it next turn, but if I did it now, Rodos might just kill it. Oh yeah, never mind, we <laughs> had the UDK, what am I saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, sh I sh should have revived it, yeah. Anyway, like I said, I just woke up and I had I had very short uh, sleep today. I'll probably go, you know, maybe take a nap after this video. We'll see. I'm not like, you know, dead tired. I, you know, been working out and been sleep, sleeping well, but <laughs> I didn't sleep well last night. I, I slept well, but I slept very um, short amount. But yeah, we, we should have done the revive instantly. Because I forgot that Taras did the nuke and he was pretty much only gonna have single target damage after that. So we were actually relatively safe with the UDK, which was very good pick against him here. My UDK is not built on resistance, but he is extremely tanky and that often goes a long way and makes it very hard for my enemies if they do something like this. And now that he has less teammates, even if the Taras gets the AoE nook back, it's not gonna hit that hard anymore, so I think we're good. Okay, okay, we got it. <laughs> 2 out of 2 so far, I, I'll take it. It could have gone a lot worse and obviously, you know, he does have pretty good champions. I'm sure this is not, you know, the best account in the game, but for me, it, it does look kind of intimidating that everybody is empowered and he has plus four Sifi and Rotos and so on, plus two Taras, but I'm I'm sure there's a lot of uh, stronger accounts than that. Okay, interesting. Somebody is actually asking about Platinum Arena on Reddit, so we'll take a look at it after this uh, battle. But yeah, Platinum kind of made it clear when Armands was new that they don't have plans to nerf it. And m many people were instantly calling for nerfs on him. I would say, say that Armands is kind of, you know, OP, but. Obviously, so is, so is both Gal Galatir and Crixia. All of these champions are kind of impossible to play against, and there's no counters. But, um, yeah, I don't know if they're, they should nerf all of them. If they just nerf one of these, I don't think that would be good. But I think Armand is definitely OP, and Weather gets the first pick as a big advantage, which didn't used to be that way. Before Armands, it almost felt like um, second pick was advantage because then you could counter the enemy team. But now, when you know that, um, should I go? No. Now that you know you're gonna go with Armands, no matter what, in every battle anyway, it is definitely much bigger deal to go first.
I think we're gonna go with uh, double reviver again in this battle. I want to have the, both the polymorph from Duchess and the uh, um, A1 and A3 um, cooldown reset from Angora against this team. He's gonna go first anyway, so Unikensa doesn't. He's not, she's not a primal champion or mythic champion. She doesn't have any innate uh, lockout counter mechanic in her, so she wouldn't work. Do I want to ban one of the lockout champions, or should I just go one of the nukers? I think um, he's gonna go first anyway. I probably the best bet here would be to ban the charge and <laughs> pray for some polymorph procs. I mean, we do have two champions with six star blessing, so if we can survive for a while, and I think we can, surely we're gonna get some procs. Every champion in his team can get polymorphed, but especially the others than Arbiter, so it's very likely that we'll get something. That's where the meta is at, I mean. <laughs> Drog might not be happy with it, but you know, you got to do what you can. Interesting, 6p stone skin Harima, meaning that her damage is gonna be very low and she doesn't even have defense buff on her team, so I don't I don't see at all how she could actually kill me. I have double reviver and my wheels are insanely tanky because I never go first. Uh, I'm just trying to be as tanky as possible when I know that I'm gonna go second anyway, so this kind of builds is um, my team is meant for something like this. It would have been different, of course, if I didn't um, ban the, um, the charge it. But just with this stone skin Harima, I mean, there's no way he can actually kill me. So I think we pretty much won already, to be honest. I know I often say it too early, but in this battle I'm definitely gonna declare a win already. I, do, I don't think this can even get lo close because, uh, you know, my Duchess is 160k with Bolster and Immortal, and I'm running double Reviver and double Polymorph, so that Harima is not gonna kill me. I, I was just talking about it with um, somebody who was asking me that I think it was the exact same thing that should he put his Harima in a 6p stone skin or Savage set and I told him that by the way I have spoken about this many many times before but maybe not often enough I have a link to a damage calculator on my discord that does many many different things it's an excel file you can get the exact damage calculating your stats and masteries and enemy champions that mitigate damage like Arima and like every passive that is relevant and so on and um, you can also compare different item sets on same champion and do multiple multiple different things that are relevant for PvP on it like calculate bomb damage and so on but when he was comparing his bills in the calculator with the savage set and 6p stone skin it was like um, I think it was like 30% uh, of the damage or something like that. It was a massive, it, it was more than, I think it was, was it 30% or 40% uh, of the damage if if it was with Savage set. So it's gonna be an insane damage drop. Obviously it depends on the enemy defense levels and the specific battle, but you cannot assure that, um, not assure, you can assume that the enemy Supports are gonna be between like 4,000 and 6,000 defense in uh, in uh, live arena, at least when you are at the medium to high level of it. I mean, you could obviously build way more than 6,000 defense if you wanted, but people focus HP instead of defense. I actually have a video. Um, talking about that too, why it works that way and why HP is much more important. 
but yeah, so everybody is still gonna have a good amount of defense. The, the thing about defense is that um, after 4200 defense, you're gonna have big diminishing returns and it's not gonna be super big deal anymore, or the increase is not gonna be big deal. But the thing is that uh, in PvP, there's a lot of champions and effects that give you ignore defense. And that that's why you kind of want to have more than that often. But also, you know, if the enemy fully or very highly ignores your defense, then it's almost worthless to build and or, or completely worthless if you fully ignore it. And that's why building HP is much more important. But you still, you know, always want to get the 4200 plus defense on tanky support champions. Okay, again the same stuff, but do we want to pick UDK or not? I mean, we're definitely gonna pick Rotos, but do I want to get UDK? Probably, I mean, he already has the Armand, so if I don't pick it and he picks it, then I'm screwed. I think there's a good chance that we might go with maybe Wukong on this battle. Oh, Gaius. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Wukong kind of sounds appealing here. But should I go with uh, with the Necker just because the Gaius bombs bombs might uh, might get me? Yeah, I think we're actually gonna go with Necrot just, just because of that. I mean, you know, he's gonna go first, and there's no question about it, so I need to deal with the Gaius damage. Okay, and he, yeah, he banned the Dutchess. Both Dutchess and Necrot are in bolster, so they might um, allow me to survive the bombs. Also, now I only, only have Rotos in Polymorph. But at least he's in immunity too, but he still has the Harim, so I, I don't know if uh, Rotos can kill him. Oh, <laughs> barely didn't die. By the way, I, I was talking about it before that I was... Uh, that, that might be best or the worst time to talk about it, but I was planning to switch my Rotos boots from um, attack to speed if I could, and I was saying that I don't want to do it because uh, if I fail it and I don't get the right right stat it would suck, and I'm just gonna wait it until I have a lot of material so I'm gonna be safe about it. Okay, looks like the bomb didn't do a lot because he didn't have attack buff, but I actually got it done on weekend because I had a lot of the material saved up. Now my Rotos is kind of fast. Let me show it after this battle. I can actually um, pull it up from Optimizer. It gives you the uh, best view so that you can see the full um, stats. I don't think we can kill the Harima with the ally attack, so let's let's get the civil. Okay, nice. So far so good. We we got that battle as well. Like I said before, you know, Rotos is super strong champion, but he can kind of be countered, so he isn't um, immortal god. But if our base Harima and UDK didn't exist, Rotos would be way better than you think, and there would be threads every day complaining about him. The issue is that those champions counter him so hard that um, 
he isn't as OP as he otherwise would be. But other champions in the game really don't have crazy counters like that. Only Rotos. But yeah, as you can see, we're pretty fast now. 260 speed, 266 speed, and also pretty tanky build. And by the way, I always um, mention this, but on every video I have, there's a link to my optimizer, and you can see all of my builds and stuff. Stats on there. I often change things. I probably will change this Unikensa build. I kind of put <laughs> random pieces on her and was kind of trying stuff. I'm not sure exactly what build I will make on her. Maybe I will make her more tanky or fast, and maybe I will put some of my better gear from other champions on her. We'll see about that, but so far she kind of got random spare parts that aren't very clipped or as ended. And here's what I'm running on uh, Wukong today, just full speed accuracy build. 318 speed, not insanely fast, you know. I have my best speed gear on Armands. This is again kind of spare pieces, but Wukong. Wukong should be relevant in some battles. Okay, so far four wins. We're doing well. Wait, that's yeah, that's losses yesterday. Okay. Oh fuck. <laughs> Why did it go there? Okay. Oh, this is pretty interesting too. Feeling like I got burned. I spent a decent amount of money in this game, but watching the inflation in the game continue to the rise is pretty disheartening. After today and seeing the response to the dungeon divers screw up is kind of uh, insane. I may be, I'm just here to rant, but I'm about ready to pull out of this game if they continue respond to their own screw ups in an unprofessional way. If anything, I feel like um, making it more friendly and less expensive to play would increase return of old players and new players. I wonder what they discuss during their business meetings. We were kind of talking about similar stuff actually with Cruz and Drog and Noob. And we were kind of memeing about it and um, Drog was uh, guessing that they might sell the florins to... Um, do I want to go with UDK here? No. They might sell the florins in back that people need to repair their sieges and he obviously was kind of, you know, skeptical about... Um, hmm. Uh, maybe I don't think my Ungensa is gonna be fast enough here. I think he's just gonna cut in and kill it through the stone skin, but let's go with it. But yeah, it, it often feels like Plarium is, you know, too. too. Um, like they don't even give lip service for the players. I think if they just gave us a little bit lip service, um, it would go long a long way and it wouldn't even like cost them anything. I, I sometimes feel like they are kind of bad at PR stuff, but that's just my opinion. But in regards to getting burned out, I would say that, you know, especially considering that I was in MAD for three years, there was a large amount of people that got burned out from the game. They spent too much money on the shards and for a while they were super active and they were like let's say somebody started to do well in arena then they started spending a lot more and then after a while they got burned out and then they quit the game and i saw this cycle many times that somebody is playing the game super hardcore super into it and then he only quits the game a couple months later and i, I would say that uh seeing that i definitely think that uh, you know you don't want to go too hard on the spending if it, if you feel bad about it. So as long as you're com comfortable with that, you might uh, 
not get bored by the game as fast and even though I always complain about champions, you know, you know, I wish I had better champions, I would have rank 1 trophy if I had lockout a couple years ago and I would have more fun time right now if I had like any meta champions. But also at the same time, if you have everything, then you don't have a lot of uh, new stuff to look forward and those people sometimes kind of lose the motivation to play because of it. Um, who should I protect here? I think we're not even gonna protect... Oh, okay, we need to have enough accuracy for the CV. I was gonna say that let's not even protect anybody and just do the damage, but okay. Actually, that that worked out fine because um, I don't think he can kill my Dutchess with the weak hit now. Oh, never mind, I can just block revive it. I could have given Given the dots as the poison cloud next turn. I kind of like it that on Unkensa you do have like multiple options of things that you can do. You could always go for the ally attack on L1 or kind of whatever you need. Like right now we could give the poison cloud to Rotos, and that means that Sifi wouldn't be able to sleep Rotos with A1, so it can all be kind of interesting. But yeah, I, I wish I had, you know, better champion RNG, but at the same time, I think I kind of, um, oh, against tips, <laughs> I kind of um, have my interest in the game last a lot longer than some other people, because um, at one point they had everything, especially not, 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 to, <laughs> not to single out dips, I'm pretty sure he, he didn't buy this account and he but I know he didn't buy it and he just got it from somebody that quit the game or is driving for him. I'm not sure about the exact details. But, you know, many people that buy a super strong account, this is what usually, especially this way, like for the burning out. Somebody is in the game, they're spending a lot of money, then they buy like some super strong account, one of the top accounts in the game, and they wail hard on it play for a few months, do pretty well in arena, and then quit the game because they they suddenly get bored at it. I've seen that thing so many times. That's why the top accounts in Raid have been like sold numerous times. Like the same same top account can have been sold like you know more than 10 times. And the funny thing is that it's often the same same people like when you buy the account and um okay not not the best. Yeah. Uh, let me think about it. Yeah, we don't want to go with Justice, we'll go with Angora. Yeah, he, he knows <laughs> he knows how to counter me. Um You buy the account, it's from the same guy, you know, leader of Gods and Legends uh, engine, he's a big account seller. You buy the account from him, then you get bored from the game, and then he resells the same account, and the, the same top accounts have been sold like ridiculous amounts of times. I'm not a big fan of, you know, account trading, though it's super, super common, and almost every single top account in this game have been sold many times, so it is what it is. There's a few that have, you know, the original owners and the account has never been sold, but almost all of them have been sold many, many times. I think we'll go with uh, Wukong here. It's, what? Dude, I wanted to do the battle. Why did you surrender? I'm kind of curious too, like, was that his own account or... I don't... Yeah, no, no, that's not his own account. I think Deeps used to have own account for a very long time, but then he got given like a very strong account from somebody that quit the game. I don't think he paid for that and I don't think he's driving, I think he, he just got it for free. And I think he stopped playing on his original account. He was playing it um, for a long time, it never seemed that he was gonna 
with doing it, but I don't think he plays on his own account anymore. That, that might, you know, maybe divide some opinions, I'm sure. There's many people watching that also have bought their account. I kind of, you know, I'm not a big fan of account trading. I think it's kind of bad for the game and I wouldn't do that. But then again, you know, Varium doesn't really do anything about it. So they kind of uh, tacitly endorse it. I said this before, I know it's a little bit, you know, controversial, but it's uh, also factual. If they if they started banning accounts that have been um, uh, sold, that would mean like, you know, 90% of uh, top 50 accounts, probably more than 90%, but let's say 90% of top 50 accounts would be banned and, you know, even content creators would be banned. It's for those people that are not in the know, it's way more, way more common than you think. But yeah. I may, may, maybe I'm just being salty because like on those accounts, like, you know, somebody wails on it because they get their hands on a good account. Then they sell it after like, you know, a couple months. And that's why those uh, those accounts are super insane, because so many people have wailed on the same accounts, and I'm sure that's why Plarium doesn't actually want to ban them, because they are making them a lot of money. Do I want to pick it? Maybe I should go with Wukong or Unkensa. Let's go with Unkensa here. Let's let's try stuff. Maybe maybe Unkensa could um could be good against the Galater. Wukong will just get easily killed by Lazarus and lock out my team. Maybe this is better. And you know, obviously many people have just gotten their accounts for free. I'm not saying that, I don't know. I'm not saying it's innately bad to buy accounts, but I think it's kind of bad for the competitive uh, aspect of the game and it's definitely, you know, skirting the rules at least on paper. Like b basically what Barium does is that uh, they want the bot accounts uh, being sold uh, to be like, they want to enforce that. They don't want people to make bot accounts and sell them for cheap for new players, but they are kind of okay with the uh, with the mega accounts being traded because those make them a lot of money. Should I kill Lazarus or Sifi? I'm not sure. Let's go for Sifi. Who do I want to hit? I don't want to get the counter. There. I guess we'll have to go for Galatir, but that's not good either. Galadir A1 on both of the forms is insane. Okay, now now it gets interesting. I could do Poison Cloud on... Um, on my Narsus, maybe? Yeah, no, now he's gonna survive it for sure. Come on, Unikensa, let, 
Let's see what you can do. Keep, do, do your best. Oh, he just got the buff strip and didn't get any polymorph. The the issue with um this poison cloud, I guess, is that I oh it's one turn left. So I think she's gonna die now. But unlike the one from um wait wait, should we go for a one? We should go for a one. We can kill it now. Oh, unlike the one from Hydra, it's not protected, so you can just buff. Ah, weak hit. Ah ah. Ah, uh, god damn it. I don't yeah, I don't think we can finish it off with the A1. <laughs> un un unlike the one from Hydrate, he isn't protected, so he can just bar strip it and I don't um, well I, I have two champions with polymorph, but clearly not enough against this Galater. Okay. That's super unlucky. Now now he gets uh polymorph when he would like die to the next Duchess hit, and that's just gonna keep him alive and um Make sure that uh, I can't kill it. M maybe my my Narcissus. Wait, ah, he was too low HP. He killed it through the poison cloud. Okay, I think we lost it. Oh, okay, we got thrown. Okay, <laughs> it's a very close battle. I don't know if um, Ungensa has been like useful here or not. It almost kind of looked like so, but. Uh, I don't know if she actually did uh, anything good. I think the Galater is gonna have to revive again too. No, maybe maybe next turn. Damn! If if we had the Poison Cloud back already, it would be super nice. So I think maybe we broke the passive or the impulse set on her because I feel like last turn we when we had the poison cloud it was too early but you know we got a win against this guy obviously it's a very strong account and you know every every time I I win against him you know it's a pretty big deal you know I know it happens all the time and I can't I can't flex about every win but you know it's not you know it's kind of big deal actually no, not sure if we can really give Ungens a, the, you know, the glory here. I feel like she was kind of useful, but the Galatir bus trip in the Poison Cloud didn't really, like, um, it actually wasn't that good. Maybe I could put her in protection set. Maybe, maybe I can think about that, like, do a fast, maybe five piece protection, one piece stone skin build. Wait, <laughs> Can you even do 5-piece? You, you still get the effect, I think, on 4-piece, right? Maybe I could do something like that. But on the second time, my Narciss was too slow, uh, too, too low and he just died through the... Uh, poison Cloud, anyway. Yeah, okay, so you get it at 4-piece and 6-piece. I could maybe do 4-piece, 5-piece um, protection and 4-piece stone skin. I'm not exac exactly sure how I want to build my Ungenesa yet. Like I said, I'm just experimenting and I was thinking, where, okay, there she is, thinking that the two piece impulse that might be kind of interesting for her because of the getting the poison cloud back. But the second piece isn't even that good. <laughs> it's just a five star chest. The helmet is kind of good, but it doesn't have an accuracy substat, so it's better for some tanky champion that doesn't require hack accuracy like her but I didn't really go super hard on her accuracy and she does gain a little bit from her passive too but I don't know if I, if I should have her in more of it though because the, um, the passive is super good though I think as long as I proc this on nukers which I should do with this accuracy that should be enough and if they have Somebody at like 800 or 900 resistance that is actually built to try to resist things If I had like 500 or 600 accuracy that wouldn't often make any difference anyway, so I feel like 
either you go 400 accuracy or you go like um, 800 but i don't think there's that much point to go like anywhere in between those but yeah if you have any suggestions then hit me up like i said i kind of put her on random spare pieces that are not very clipped and not my main items i didn't steal gear from anybody to build her and i'll i'll kind of think about it if i'm actually gonna use her or how am i how am i gonna use her in future but so far we're doing pretty good i mean we have pretty uh pretty massive win streak seven wins or let's call it six wins i don't know why dips left the battle i don't think it was unwinnable matchup for him maybe he disconnected or had buck or i don't know what happened there oh he actually sent me a message Yeah, but by the way, um, pretty often people message me after battles and during videos and streams. It probably goes without saying, but don't get offended if I don't reply to your message until after the video or stream. Sometimes I look at them, sometimes I don't. Sometimes after I end my stream, there's like six people that DM me and I didn't even know about it because I wasn't looking, but yeah. Now I saw that the deeps actually actually did message me after the battle. He's saying that we are using the cha same champions, Narsis and Rotos. Those are his main nukers too, and he didn't want to. <laughs> he 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 said that he he left because I take uh, I take too long time to pick champions <laughs> and and turns. Okay, I don't think I always do that, though I do get that comment pretty often, but come on. I, I might not instantly do it always, sometimes I do it instantly, but sometimes I might um, take my time to think about it, or I'm just, you know, uh, not focused and I'm talking about something else, but come on. It's kind of funny, but I don't think I should be super proud about him quitting the battle because it might take a while. Okay, our base, uh, hmm. how can we even deal with this? Rados was kind of horrible choice here. I guess we're gonna go with Helicat then. <laughs> Great that we can survive, I might have picked Angora if he didn't, but maybe Helicat would actually be better here than Angora. Oh, he went for Helicat ban, good. That means that we're at least gonna have one AoE nuker that can can do something while the R base is in stone skin and taunt.
yeah, we're kind of uh, screwed in many ways here because um, first of all, his team is almost fully for affinity, and then the damage is reduced by harm passive, and then he also has the taunt up on our base a lot. So this team is countering my rotas insanely hard. He's not really gonna do a lot in this battle, if anything. But at least we had uh, um, Narsus, even though he got the Armands, which, you know, often he could just um, not let me have Narsus, but we do have him, so we we have one new guard that might do something about it, but we're still not gonna one-shot them because um, um, they have Harima passive and they are not they are not using the shields on purpose and they even have the defense buff so it's insanely tanky. Maybe we could get polymorph on Harima or our base. That's basically the win win condition that we have in this battle. Do I want to go? I think we. If I just kill anybody else here, first of all, I can weak it. But Ankara is just gonna revive them with cooldown, so we we have to focus on Ankara. We need to kill it first. And the the issue is that he's gonna rotate, you know, the um, the block damage and taunt in between, you know, me getting sometimes one hit on Ankara. And probably half of the other time my nukers are gonna be dead, so... Looks kind of grim battle. I think the only way I can beat this is with uh, polymorph procs. Okay, there's one, but you know, both of my nukers are dead and I think he's gonna get the block damage. No, okay, not yet. But our base down, I guess. Oh, okay, never mind. Now he just. Yeah, I think we lost this one. If I knew that he had the R base, maybe maybe support Wukong would have been the best choice in this battle. Damn, I think it's gonna be the... <laughs> The first loss of today, sadly. Unless a miracle happens and we got we get everybody polymorphed at the same time, I think it's over. Narciss is not even getting any turns because either he's dead or has taunt up or it's a uh, block damage or you know he's not being able to do anything. What? Okay, what? What, what was that uh, relentless at Angora? How did it, did it take so many turns? Damn, we almost killed it, but even if we did, I think we... I don't think we're gonna pull off another revive.
Are we? By the way, I have like no, no relentless set on my account. I don't know if it's too late to go for it. I, I have actually seen a couple times recently that people use it in arena on supports. I don't, I don't have any like, I don't think I have any good pieces for support champions on relentless. I almost have one decent nuker set. I think I need like one more piece to do it, but you know, relentless nuker set is not really relevant when Savage, Lethal and Merciless and Slayer sets exist. Maybe for, you know, uh, PvE stuff, but not for, not for PvP. Okay, can we get somewhere? So close, Harima is almost dead. Wait, wait, dude. Can we actually win it? I. I kind of already gave up the hope. I didn't. I didn't think we could do. Or is the Alas still just gonna solo me? I'm kind of scared about the Alas. They hit so hard. Granted that that my you know, obviously what is keeping me alive here is that my Duchess is insanely tanky and good affinity against Alas too. I don't think I showed the Duchess build when I was showing the optimizer. Give me a sec. I, I don't, you know, I don't even have the platinum stats right now because the reset was yesterday. So take that into account when you see these stats. I didn't even buy the bolster. Um, um, what's it called? Forge pass last time. I think I bought bolster forge pass twice, and I'm not gonna buy it anymore. But I could get. Fairly easily, maybe even upgrade with the weapon, I think, and it would be even better. But all of the other pieces, apart from the weapon, which you know is the easiest piece to upgrade, are super good. Y you'll see in a second. The, the Duchess is almost 161k HP. Damn! Come on, dude, dude! I'm so, I'm so ready to get this win, but the Alas is just not. Not letting me get a chance. Are we still gonna lose it in the end? Come on. Yeah. Now, now we lose the whale and it's gonna die again before it gets a turn. I don't know if... I don't think I can pull off another revive anymore. I, yeah, I think Tartus is dead. And we have the decrease speed and the... Yeah, okay, super close. We are we almost won it. We can't get too angry, you know. Obviously his team countered us super hard, so we were mainly in the battle so long because of Duchess being tanky, but the revive doesn't revive you at full turn meter and you know, we didn't get it. And to be fair, I I think I kind of got unlucky against him to be honest, because the Arways didn't polymorph. And she broke the decrease speed like countless amounts of times on both Rodos and Duchess, so she really should have been polymorphed a couple times during this battle, so it could have gone a lot better. But th th <laughs> this is what I'm running on Duchess. Um, 160,700 HP, 4.7k defense and 265 speed in 4-piece stone skin and um, Four piece bolster. I could even have her higher HP if I put her in two piece immortal instead of stone skin, but I do like the four piece stone skin. I, I do have very good immortal pieces too. I used to use them a lot during the meta where shields and bolsters, bolster set was super good, and you often stack it multiple bolster or shield sets in classic arena defense teams and going for max, max HP was very meta thing to do. I'm not really using those pieces right now because obviously shield set is like a um, liability in classic arena because of Narsus.
Uh, yeah, let's go with this. I, I'll just go with Wugong if he picks the UDK, since they can have, have the R base anyway, so... I've been stuck in gold pile for months, and I was convinced that only Wales could make it to platinum there, but I guess grinding does pay off. Anyone has any tips for staying in this tier? Where, okay, first of all, don't listen to this guy. You won't stay in this tier. You could stay in the tier. I mean, but the hard truth is that uh, getting to platinum and staying in platinum during the reset is uh, not even comparable. <laughs> it's in different uh, dimensions. But saying that if you can get to platinum and you can do semi fast battles, if you just want to get your first avatar, you could try to do a short like 5 minute push or something like that and maybe you can get it. That, that's the best way to get it if your account isn't um, really good enough in in practice to actually make the cut. Uh, Status and who else? Okay, we're kind of memeing. I don't know if I if I just should have played it um, tried and true and gone with the Duchess, but let's let's see how it goes. But yeah, if you really want to make it to uh, that um, testy, then do a short push and build a defense for uh, that, and you might give it a go. Okay, so yeah, he did have the R base. I think we're still gonna go for the Krixia ban. He's almost certainly gonna ban my Armands, but just in case he doesn't, then um, we don't want to get locked out. Though, to be fair, Unikensa can do the decreased defense and um, weaken, and of course she can get polymorphed, but that goes through immunity, and it will both reduce the damage from Harima, and also give my Stalos a chance to actually kill her, so let's see. So <laughs> I think Narciss is just gonna one shot one shot Stalos before it gets a turn. Oh he saved the AoE nook until the Rod of Stone skin ends. Interesting. Okay, I don't know if I should give the poison cloud to Ankara or do the do the decrease defense. Um, I think Ankara is gonna die if I don't do it, but she might even die with the poison cloud. She's so low HP. But okay, let's do the ah. We got polymorph. Okay, that didn't go well. How much polymorph does he have? Everybody is in it. Okay. Damn, with the decreased defense buff, we still couldn't kill the Harima through the, uh, the Narcissus through the Harima passive. Okay, it's over. Okay, <laughs> two battles in a row, but you know, obviously it's against Harima, so... I can't wait to get something that would work against her, but what I really need is a Nuker. T to be fair, I, I think Unkenza is kind of okay, she's not really something that you should force into the every battle, and probably not the last one, but sometimes she can kind of be interesting. I will definitely keep her geared and try to find opportunities to use her. Okay, wh 
What now? I don't think this guy is gonna be um, our base on Rotos since he doesn't have any reviver yet. I think we're just gonna go with um, Rotos, but who else do we want to pick? I kind of, I kind of want to go with the Unkens again. Maybe, mm, maybe I should have picked Ankara now and then possibly Unkens on next turn. Maybe, maybe that's what I should have done. Yeah, maybe I could have picked Wukong, but he went for it. This is actually kind of bad. He didn't go with any reviver. Should we go with triple Nuker? Mikaki got, might get Polymorph. Should we play on the chance that they get Polymorph and go with Heligat? Obviously, Wukong could steal the stone skin and so on, but... Um... No, let's go with Tormin. He doesn't have any immunity. Obviously, Mikaki doesn't have to open with the ally attack. And she's not gonna do it, but... Um... Wukong can get Rosen on... Um... Revive and so on, so maybe this will be good. And he kind of wants to get the attack buff, so but I don't think he is gonna go for it now, though. But I, I think we kind of wanted to get the third Nuker since he does have the UDK and Rodos isn't gonna do anything. I wish Unkensa did. Uh, <laughs> the defense buff on her kit, then I could maybe try to pair her, her with uh, Dormin or my other defense scaling nukers. Wait, he doesn't have stone skin on the UDK, that's kind of odd. Wait. Oh, come on. <laughs> Nobody get frozen. That's so unlucky. Ah, come on. Can we get taunt at least? Okay, we got taunt. Okay. And now we got freeze. Good. But, yeah, what is the... Yeah, who, what is the Wukong A2 gonna do with the attack buff? <sighs> okay, we, we can kill the UDK for sure if we just don't weak it. So if we do that, we're good. What? 68k, how is that even possible? I mean, obviously that must be without Helm Smasher, but Ellen then... Oh wait, dude, I'm dumb. He did have the Harima. Yeah, okay, yeah. Goddamn Harima, if it wasn't for that, then... We would have been... Good, okay. That's the third loss in row. I mean, he could have gotten weak hit, you know... Maybe we could have still made it, but uh, we kind of lost it. Uh, let me look at that matchup again. Yeah, like, I could have get gotten Polymorph if I just got Polymorph on the Wukong. That would have been an easy win, but uh, we didn't. Or, or like Harima, either one of those. Or, you know what, I think the team pick was fine. Nobody got frozen at the start from Mikage, like somebody should have gotten frozen or multiple people. And neither Harima or Wukong got Polymorph, even though we had uh, two champions with the Polymorph. So we did kind of get unlucky on this battle. I think if we if we do that battle ten times, we're gonna win definitely more than five, five of them. Like, we should win that battle most of the time, but happens. Obviously not. Even if we did win it, it wouldn't be like a dominating result. But, you know, Harima is my Achilles heel. I really can't do anything about Harima.
but yeah, I think we can safely say that there, there's a reason that I have uh, never seen anybody pull out Unkenso. When we get new champions, if they are good, even if it's like a mythic champion, on the first day or the first weekend of the release, I'm gonna always battle multiple champ multiple players with those champions, like when, for instance, Alas was released and so on. I think on the weekend where Alas was released, <laughs> I battled somebody with uh, plus two Alas instantly. So, you know, the whales are gonna get it and even just by RNG, many people are gonna get the strong new stuff instantly. And if you don't see them used, chances are there's a reason for it. I just feel like Unkenza is almost on the level that she, she could be strong. She just would need a little bit something more. I think we have to go with this because if I big Rotos now I'm screwed. I have to go with the UDK, but he obviously could still pick UDK and just um I don't know go with lockout or for some way deal with my UDK. So I I do have the Arman, so probably he's not gonna go for it. Okay, so we need two nukers now, there's no other choice, so Rotos and um, Helicat. <laughs> Helicat could be kind of funny pick here, actually. Dude, let's go with Helicat. My Helicat is kind of down geared, he isn't in the best nuker like he used to be. But we do have the Armands here, so it's kind of... Uh, Unlikely that he's gonna go for the Rotos ban, and he doesn't have any uh, bar strip on his team yet. I mean, he kind of does with the petrification from uh, our base, but basically not. So we're gonna get the block damage. But who do I want to ban? Our base or Knishak? Maybe Knishak actually, right? Yeah, I think we have to go for Knishak Pan. So it, it could... It could... Uh, weak hit on Helicat. Maybe I should, should have just gambled it and... Went for the R base Pan, because there's a good chance that it will... Weak hit on Helicat and not... Um, not reduce the bomb timer. And in that case I could get the block damage on everybody and... We would be fine. This is a very weird matchup, so I'm not sure how this is gonna go. Nah. Well, okay. I'm not happy with the extra turn, but not like we had any buffs or anyway. And there's a chance that uh, the R base could get polymorphed, since we're yeah we're gonna get the decrease speed here. And if we get multiple, you know, extra turns now, it would be actually kind of cute because um, it would give us a chance to polymorph the R base. But the first extra turn didn't do it since we had stone skin. So I would have need like needed more extra turn procs and at that point it would have been useful. 
no, no, yeah, we, we got one, one, I mean, but the, the first one didn't count, so. Uh, what's the duration of the shield? Yeah, it's two turns. Then we can do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't want to do it, but gets, let's get rid of the decrease speed on Rodos. Oh, I think I screwed it up. I shouldn't have done the heal on UDK, even though it heals himself, but now... Ankara is gonna have a shield and not the block damage in one turn, though I think he can probably take a hit because of the defense buff that she's gonna get. And anyway, you know, actually never mind. He doesn't have Harima and the taunt isn't up, so we're just, you know, gonna kill him and that's it. What am I even saying? You know, Harima is so OB, obviously Harima destroys Rotos, but if they don't have Harima, then I can do damage and it's a bit different. Oh, never mind. I already closed the Reddit. I guess there wasn't anything more interesting there. But yeah, we started out super well. Now it's kind of winding down at the end and we had multiple losses in a row, but if we don't have a massive uh, loss streak, then this has been already like a, a fine session, I guess. Okay, yeah, his starting picks are not um, not bad for me. Mm, yeah, let's go with these two. Let's not even go with the Reviver yet. Obviously, Sivi and Taras are insanely strong first two picks. But, you know, Arima is just... Uh, I don't have the champions to deal with her. I much rather go against this and... Since this used to be meta so long, I have ways to deal with this. Both UDK and, and Narcissus are gonna be great against both of them. Yeah, I'm I'm not fan of Affidius, his um debuffs are super annoying. I often like to ban him if possible. Uh, I think I think we're gonna go with Heligat on this battle. Heligat or a Reviver? Do I really need a Reviver here? Then again, I'm gonna get the Aphidus debuffs very likely, so I probably should go with the Dathus just just to have a Polymorph and a Reviver. I mean, he basically has to ban the armaments, so we're gonna have a fairly strong team.
Okay, in that case I'm gonna go just for the Avidio span. I was expecting like a lockout or something like that, but okay. I think this matchup is great for us though. To be fair, this guy is 7.7k points, that's very high, so I don't know if that's like, I don't think it's top 50, but I mean, I'm sure it's top 100. So, maybe like top 60 or 70 out of top of my head, maybe, maybe top 50, but um, I'm sure he has very good gear. The team itself doesn't look that, that scary to me, but um, maybe it's like he's overall comfort pick team and he's just not you know not familiar with how easy it is to counter me but yeah i think if rotos can just get couple turns against this guy then we can take care of it pretty easily okay down goes city she's not gonna come back because she's block revived since he had three buffs when we killed her. And now even the Taras AoE Nook isn't gonna do that hard. Because there's only two champions in the team and he's not gonna have an endless amount of uh, buffs. <laughs> 252k, that, that was a nice damage. Okay, he... Th that was surprisingly easy, let me double check. He's... Um, 7.7k. What rating is that or rank? Wait, where is it? Oh, there, yeah. So he's ranked 64. So I think I said like 60 or 70. So it was, you know, I was literally like spot on. But yeah. Oh, and Drog is right next to him. That's that's interesting. Okay, Drog. Yeah, Drog has. Gone down a lot in rankings, you know, he used to be rank 1, but he obviously hasn't played that m much since then, but yeah. You can't see it right now, but it's kind of the same thing for me, I, I moved myself. I used to be a lot more active, like early this year I was rank 100, but now, now I'm not even, like I'm 234, so there's quite some catching up, but um... Yeah, we need, we need like 1,000 more points to be top 100. That's that's actually a lot of battles. That's not going to be something we can do in one or two weeks. That, that's going to take a um, couple months of active gameplay. So we are doing very well like in the last week since I'm uh, back from summer laziness i think uh we're definitely climbing a lot more than i used to but you know 1000 points is gonna take a while okay we're again as the fellow cluster mate but i got the first pick so maybe this will go my way Uh, okay, let's go with Ankara instead of Duchess on this one. L like I said many times, I I prefer to early pick Duchess if I don't fully know their team, just so that I have some polymorph in my team because I only have two choices. It's R Rodosar, Rodos and Duchess, and picking neither one of them, not counting the blessings, often is optimal. But I really want to have at least one of them, but. Ideally both of them. I need more polymorph. At least um, if I don't know the enemy team. Maybe he doesn't have any debuffs. But in this instance, uh, Angora would be great against the Yumeko. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go with Rotos and UDK against this one. I don't really have to ban Yumeko. So if he picks Harima now... I'm gonna go for the Harima ban actually, but we'll see about that. 
I mean, I want to ban the Yumako, but yeah, it's not completely mandatory. I was, you know, expecting the Harry Master last week. Okay, as long as we can get some turns on Rotos and survive a bit, I think this is gonna go fine. I think on the... if we get... oh, uh, I think he's gonna die, yeah. On the next turn, head, heads will start rolling, but okay. He didn't get the next one. And he didn't get enough um, HP stolen, so I think the Taras... Oh, we, we got in, okay, nice. I think the Taras would have just been able to kill us with the A1. I don't think, I don't think it's 100% certain that I have enough damage to kill the Maritska right now, so I don't want to risk it because Taras would kill us on the next day one. So let's just kill the Yumeko that we're sure about that we can kill and um, steal some HP and get some HP from the kill from the mastery. We might have been able to end the f battle faster if I went for the Maritska on the A3, but I wasn't 100% certain if I did kill her, so... But okay, I think we're good at this point. Nice. Okay, so we had like a 3 battle lost streak, but now we already avenged it, so now any wins that we can get is just pure profit at this point. I think we we gained maybe like um, 40 points already, so if we could get like two more wins, it would have been a very good session. Wukong and Unkensa I didn't use in that many battles though. Well, actually, okay, to be fair, I used Unkensa in the battles where I lost and I kind of wanted to play with her. And maybe she wasn't the best pick, but yeah, I didn't really get to put her in every single battle. I think on the next video I'm gonna also have the Sulfurion and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna keep Unkensa here, so we will see a lot of more variety in the future. Why does my... is that just a shadow? No, it's just a shadow. It looks like my hair is um, bad. I, <laughs> I think it's just a shadow. Never mind. Mm. Do I really want to pick UDK? I think should be just give him the opportunity to pick it if he really wants. I think we're just gonna go with Dotsus to be honest, to get more chance to polymorph his team. I think that's the way to go. Everybody on his team does debuffs and he's gonna go first and has three different lockout champions in his team. So, oh, four different lockout champions. So I think we need to go with this dude. I, I need to post a pixel about that. Dude, I don't have a single, to be fair, I don't have a single lockout champion on my account. This this guy is just, you know, um, messing with me and going with four of them. Who do I even want to ban at this point? I think we're gonna ban one of the nukers, but which one? I think we go for Taras ban. But yeah, that, I feel like he, he might have just... Uh, 
picked picked for blockouts just because he can do it and he knows that I don't have any to like you know mess with me. His um, brawler looks su surprisingly tanky. Usually they are not very tanky, but that one looks like it's um, 100,000 health or more. Even though it's, I'm sure, built in very fast speed and in 4 piece stone skin, it's kind of unusual to see it like that. M maybe he has very good gear on it. Who knows? Okay. Everybody has stone skin, we can't do anything. Oh, nice, nice. If Narcissus just could take the next hit, I don't know if he can though, but if he could, then he could do some damage. But yeah, imagine having uh, four lockout champions and one of them can also reset the cooldowns of the other lockout champions. <laughs> this is gonna be painful, but we could get a lot of polymorph procs. A everything that he does is pretty much subject to getting polymorph. Come on, Narcissus, you, you can take this hit. Don't get one shot. Oh, oh, he went for Rodos. Okay, never mind. I didn't expect that. But yeah, banning the Tarans was definitely the right solution because... Um, he would get a lot of buffs on this team, and we wouldn't be able to do anything for a while, and Taras would definitely kill us. Especially when the Krixia can do a cooldown reset, he could have just done... Oh, okay, we're good. He could have just done two AoE nukes at the start, and I think that certainly would have wiped us out instantly. But I think we won, right? I don't really want to declare it yet because, you know, he has 200 million different lockouts, so it's super RNG if we can get any turns, and I don't know if we can ever get a revive on Rotos in this battle. And the the Lazarus keeps being under well, so we can't really touch it a lot. Maybe we lost in the end. Come on, reset the cooldowns, please. If we do it, I think we're good. Okay, of course not. I I think we're done. I don't think we can make a comeback. He isn't getting a lot of polymorph. I guess he's not even using the lockout on Galatir for that reason, but I wish I could have rocked more polymorph on him. I guess he's kind of trying to avoid to do it. He has enough lockout as it is, I guess. Okay, now, now he's going it for to seal the deal. We could pull out the revive now, but we're, yeah, we're getting locked. Oh, no, okay. We we could have gotten weak hit from the Rixia. Yeah? That that was our last chance to maybe do a difference, but yeah, okay. He's gonna die anyway before 
she gets the turn. Yeah, if we resetted the cooldown of Narcissus during the last Angora turn, we definitely would have won it, but you know. This is one of those, you know, battles that it's not... It's not even really funny, you know. <laughs> the champion difference is kind of depressing. I feel like, you know, if I just had any of the champions that he used in the team, including Taras, I would totally win that battle. Just give me any of the champions that he has. Maybe not the Warlord, but any of the other ones. Because, you know, I'm sure he's faster than me. But give me any of the other champions and I'm like pretty certain that I would win the battle against him. <laughs> Maybe that's just me being salty, but I feel like that's definitely the case. Okay, last battle, let's get a win. Okay, again we have uh, somebody from the OC cluster. I think we won the last battle. It's kind of fading in my memory, but pretty sure we had one battle against the cluster mate on this video, and we won that one. I think that guy was like five or six thousand points tall, and this guy is. Uh, 9,000 plus. Okay, so far not bad, but he has the Armands, and if he picks like our yeah, if he picks our base and Harima, then there's nothing that we can do, and we already lost the battle. It is what it is, there's no countering those with my champion pool, so. Regardless what I pick, I can never win against <laughs> Never win against this roster. It's kind of depressing, but there's nothing that I can do about it Maybe, you know, tiny chance to win with polymorph rocks, but there's no counterplay against this and nothing I can do about it I I hate it <laughs> I, I have pretty, you know, high tolerance to, you know like losing and having uneven matchups and so on, but you know, I of, of course I want to win, you know. I'm very competitive, but I'm kind of, you know, submitted to my fate that there's nothing nothing I can do. I mean, I need to pull shards and get lucky, but outside of that, there's nothing that I can do in these kind of situations right now. I wish Harima was a fusion champion. <laughs> this game would have been so much more fun for me if it was a fusion and I had her. Not only could my enemies not use her, but you know, my teams are very tanky and that's the only way that I'm kind of, you know, keeping up with them, even though I'm perma locked out and always going second. If I had Harima, my teams would be so tanky. Like, you will be surprised how tanky, like, you know, imagine I have my 160k HP Duchess in bolster set with Harima passive, and you know, the Rotos is doing like 20k damage on her with the, um, uh, A3, I, I could, um, I could soak a lot of damage, even from those strong primal champions like Lazarus or Alas and the other ones. And every time I would get the first pick, I would have, um, well, assuming that they don't pick Harima, but I would have Armands and Siegfried, and with those two, it's, uh, they can only ban the Armands and, uh, I mean, Armands and Harima, and they couldn't ban the Harima. So I would, I would have her very often, unless the enemy, like, first picks her. Maybe if we get super lucky with the 
A1 box on Angkor. Maybe we could do it, but we didn't already. And I think, uh, you know, how much? He prob yeah, he probably doesn't have any. He has everybody on Life Harvest, so he doesn't have any Polymorph. So, hmm. Even, even if Narsus dies, we can come back actually in this battle. Maybe it's not game over if he dies. Wait, I don't think I have the cooldown of the eight. I do. Can I kill the Harima? I feel like I could maybe do it. He has four buffs and I have four buffs. It's gonna be close, but every buff increases the damage by 10%. I think we have enough damage to kill it. No, super close, super close. I don't know if those hits brought Halo Smasher. And even if they didn't, you know, the rolls have like, the damage rolls have variance. So I'm sure we could have killed it, but didn't, didn't quite do enough damage. Super close. Um, I, I misclicked. I, sh I should have hit the Taros and not the R base to reduce my dodges attack. That was a mistake. Oh. Now we couldn't even kill with the A2, but you know, the A3 does more damage than the A2 actually. Even though the A2 is the main nuke. And the A3 is a bit more conditional, but in the red, right conditions, the A3 is doing significantly more damage, actually. O of course, it's only single target. Uh, okay, I don't think we want to do anything. Do we want to just... No, I feel like we want to do it just to get the heal up on everybody. We, c we could have revived the nurses, of course, with cooldowns from Angora, but... We were getting kind of low. We want we want to heal everybody, so we have to do this. It's kind of close battle though, it lasted a while, so maybe we still have a chance. I mean, Arima could get polymorphed at any second, and if she gets polymorphed, then I might just uh, wand up the rest of his team basically. Oh, 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 that's gonna be good. Oh, no, no, never mind, I'm dumb. He lost, she lost the buffs. We, we, we definitely would have killed it with the A3 now, but she doesn't. Doesn't have three buffs anymore, so never mind. Do, do I want to revive the UDK? That is kind of low. Uh, I think we're gonna do the shield, yeah. I think Duchess has to revive on the next turn anyway. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay, my bad. One more turn. If she didn't have the taunt up right now, I could kill the Harima again, but we can't do it. Goddamn taunt. If I can just kill the... Okay, it's over. If I could just kill the Harima, then I could easily kill the rest of them, but... Harima passive is too strong, we couldn't do it. It, it was super close, I mean... I don't know if we got the Helm Smasher procs at that one time or not, but with one more of those procs or just, you know, Slightly higher damage rolls. Harima would have gotten block revived and then the game would have been over. But, you know, it's a strong team, so we'll, we'll take it. We, we have definitely a chance to win against this one, but it's not the best matchup for us. It's not the worst one. This would be way worse with Rotos, to be fair, but... Anyway, we... 
Yeah, our, our win streak got a little bit cut off on the end. At the start, we had insane, insane win streak. I think we had eight wins in a row, some something crazy like that. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully I have mod in two weeks. I think when I get mod, I'm, um, I'm planning to use her a lot. Not only does mod have the passive that would be good against Galater and so on removing one debuff from everybody every turn and healing the lowest HP champion but she also does defense buff and revive and buff strip so I think um, I might be able to use my Tormin more if I get mod maybe I could come up with some setups with that we'll, we'll see but we'll also have the Sulfurion and Ungensa so maybe we can be a bit more unpredictable and maybe <laughs> Maybe if I get lucky and I can pull one good nuke sometime soon, then it might make a big difference. But that's it for today. Good luck with your live arena and see ya.